nothing physically wrong with her. We'll, we will show her on camera, you know, when she's, when she's basically, she does eat a lot. And most people do know. Well, I have, and she can't exercise. I don't think I eat that much. Well, she has. She has to because she has, she's got um, hypoglycemia, which she burns. She burns like a candle. She, you know, and then when she's all wound up, she'll burn at the both ends of the candle. And when she's super That's wound true. up, she burns at both ends in the middle. And you'll you'll see. She starts getting in a giggly mood, a total giggly mood. When she's totally, when, when it's something that she's, and you know that she's getting ready to do something that is super well, great, or we're at an event where she's really, I mean, you have to come to some of the carpets we used to go to, where she would be from one end of the carpet to the other end of the carpet, running, you know, pacing back and forth. I did like going to them. Yeah, you know, we, we loved the things that Viacom used to put on and we would go to, but, uh, but we don't go there for reasons that keep taking our videos down. But I did like going to those events. But she couldn't stay put because I mean they would everybody would comment about the fact that she was you could you could hear her clean to the other end of the carpet and they'd all want to come down and see where that they all went over the fun was being done, which was <laughs> the But um, but that that is true, they came all the way down. <laughs> they said I but, came because they heard you laughing. But we have passed the last couple of things that we actually could go to because they like they don't start till like eight o'clock at night. You're standing outside for two hours in the cold because they're where they're at is on you know um, on back lots of studios mm -hmm. in the cold, and they start late. So and then and then it compound it is if you go to the party that's afterwards, it's even colder, mm -hmm. and it's not you know, like you don't bring jackets along with you. Well, those are some of the earlier ones because some of the carpets like the check-ins at nine, the carpet starts at ten. Yeah. And so. <laughs> then the carpet ends at 11 or 11.30. Yeah. It's like, okay, it's 11.30 at night. I do not want to really be standing outside on a carpet talking to people. So, you know, and so basically, a lot, of what we're, a lot of what you're seeing at the moment has to do with the fact that, you know, she is, I mean, okay, let me explain. This is just a minor bit of what we do. She, she does things on, on what is it, eight, nine different channels also. I, I work off of two, maybe three. No, and, you work off more than I do. No, I work on uh, I work on three. Oh, where you're physically on? Well, I'm physically on. No, but you're I work both. on everything. No, I I work behind. I okay. I am I am chief cook and bottle washer because see he he's behind the scenes on more channels. Yeah. And I'm in front of the camera yeah, on more but, channels. Like I said, when you see this stuff. This is the mind. This is our bulky stuff. But she does nine times more things than I do a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, last night she, you know, while I'm busy editing videos, she's out at, a, at an event last night. She went to an event the night before, and um, she could be going to things tonight and next week. She's got just in a few days. She's got mm -hmm. things scheduled. So I'm only on camera like things like this. Period. Mm -hmm. Because if like from uh, we go, I'm um, I'm not on camera basically at auto races when we cover them. She is. I won't be on camera. I'm not on camera at at SEMA. I'm not on camera uh, at at consumer electronic show. Oh, well, you are for wrap ups. Why well, otherwise? Wrap -ups. No, but during the day, I don't do I don't interview people because there's a basic rule of thumb. I mean, she understands why I interview no one because. What happens is a lot of cases, hey, and it kills interviews. I think it's, it's fun. But it's not fun, you know. I mean, it's not, you're not getting anything done. I mean, I'm telling one thing, I know that I'm interviewing, we, go, we went to one, um, we went to one Comic Con, I think, and the, the big trapping guy, you know, he, he stops his interviews, and goes, hey, my sister wants to know if you're available to dance with her. And we're talking about that, and uh, the moderator of the panel, you know, you know, hey guys, cut it down, you know, we're trying to, and then, hey, and the panel stops, and people, who the hell is that guy? Mm -hmm. And we're talking shop in the middle of their panel. It did the same thing. Um, we, we did a thing at the, um, at the uh, I guess it was the last one of the home entertainment things we went mm -hmm. to. And all, I mean, I worked with all of the cowboy actors up there, and they're sitting there while they're talking. They go, hey, you know, I'll, you know, and, and they get up and walk out, and they come back in, and then another one. 
So I wasn't getting any filming done because I, you know, and basically they're all wondering. I was standing next to some um, guy from Asia. Said, and they said, yeah. And then they, one of the, the guy, one of the people up, up there on the panel, I said, and the guy said, he's a, yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, people are taking pictures of me as I'm running, as I'm going out. The only one that didn't go out was some, some girl. That then, then, but she, they basically, she was doing a video release. Said what the hell she was doing on a panel with cowboy actors? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think she was from Charles in Charge or something. Yeah, like that. but she had nothing she to do. She was like the odd person out. Yeah, she didn't really want to be there, but she, you know, she had a video that she was doing. But everybody else was a cowboy person. I know. I that was like which which peg doesn't fit. Yeah, she did. She was the only one I didn't talk to on the panel. But it did. You never told me that. Well, you were up front and, you know. That's true, because I was up front, so I missed all of this. But I'm in the on. back trying to film. What I did was I set the camera on automatic, and I'd go trotting out. We'd have a conversation. You know, how's things going? Yeah. Do you remember when you were in that crappy movie and you had to have plot? I said, God, I don't want to remember my day. Yeah, but he said, you really, I mean, the guys always said, you look so hot. And he said, I don't want guys to think I look hot. <laughs> yeah. See, and now I find out about it. Tony's a stud, you know, been a stud his entire life. And guys really like that blonde hair look that he, you know, he basically, he's being, he's playing Ed Cookie Burns in a surfing movie with the, you know, his blonde hair. Always, you know, gorgeous blonde. Yeah, he did not like that role at all. I mean, the guy that basically go put dirt in his hair when he go out that night, so he wouldn't he would have a hat on, dark in the back of his hair, so nobody could see that he looked blonde, because he actually looked really good as a blonde. He could he could have been playing Germans at the same time I was doing cowboys, but no. But um, that's what happened. I mean, every guy at one of the events picked me up and. You know, just you know, he, he on you know, everybody else is getting pictures, but hurry, he sits there and gives me a great big kiss. That, this kid's, I'm looking this way; it's all going behind me, right? Yeah. You know, and people are thinking, "Why wouldn't you notice?" Well, because the carpets are loud. Oh yeah. They're really loud, and I'm focused that direction, so I ignore oh, them. I miss the whole thing. But also, if you'll um, look at some of our coverage of the Night of a Hundred Stars, you'll see people we didn't interview. You know, look at that. almost everybody that was there. You know, I mean, Robert Davies the only person I didn't work for, because he's a kid. I mean, the guy's in it. You know, he's a kid compared to everybody else. I mean, I'm from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. She was basically not doing anything until the, the 2000s. <laughs> Actually, she was, she was, a, okay, here's another thing why we understand this, because she was, uh, at once, really up there as an import car model in another life. Another lifetime, which she does understand. You know, she was also, it's all got to do about legs and butt. Yeah, so she had to, she's always, she walks, she walks an awful lot. And, uh, okay, you can basically uh, see, uh, here's another way to tell when she's sick is that her rear end and legs aren't quite as tight because she can't walk. And if she takes her, she, she has with Mont, the Montavious, who is the chair dog, is mountain goat. I mean, she is pure mountain goat. This this girl, when we took her to a dog show and as a treat, we told her she did well. We would take her up in the, so we took her up and in, into the hills. She had a good time. And she's climbing like you know, she's at the least. We went to racecraft and she basically wants to go up a mountain. It's like <laughs> she oh, loves. Oh, she it. loved that one. She is just a climbing fiend. She is and not slow. You know, it's galloping, so it's it basically, and um, you know, like she'll take me and she'll run. And she'll, you know, basically, her and her predecessor had this perverse thing. Let's see if we kill the old guy. She is totally uh, at one of the colleges over here with a where it's basically all up like this. She has got the. Ah, ah, well, that's a really good incline. Yeah, where she's trying to kill me, and I'm 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 behind her, and then she's, she's sitting there at the top. And then she wants to drag me to my death going downhill. Downhill is a really fun part for her because she gained her strength back. But, um, but no, it, it's just, think about it. How many people do you see on television or in movies do you ever, is ever sick? You don't. It isn't done. That doesn't happen. That's true. They you you don't even it. see them acting to be sick hardly ever. They don't like to do that. Here's the question. The thing is, 
Uh, most people, it's just like I am. I, I, I look at it as a, as a funny thing. I'm seeing a whole bunch of people at the Emmy, gift, at the Emmy, uh, the RAPS Emmy screening series that we went to, that people I work with in the business, and most of them are like me. When we were young, we didn't know anybody our age. Because the people, well, you know, well, Errol Flynn. Well, Errol Flynn was 39 years old when I met the man. Mm -hmm. And Ronald Reagan was 31 years old when I met the man. John Wayne was like 35 years old. Everybody I knew. My idea of old was my grandmother who was in her 40s. That was my idea of old when I was growing up. So all of a sudden, I am as old as I am. And what the hell are you supposed to be acting like when you're my age? I have no comprehension because a lot of people my age, okay, they'll say that, well, 40, you know, 60 is the new 40, 70 is the new 50, 80 is the new 60. Well, the problem is that the people my age have no comprehension. We're, they're still working. We're still, you know, I, I can play tennis, I can run, I can go surf if I wanted to. And it's not because I'm in the world's greatest shape. I'm actually 10 pounds lighter than I was when I played football. But it's the fact that I don't know that I'm not supposed to do it until somebody tells me. <laughs> so it's the same way with all of us because if you look at how many people my age are still in the business. Okay, you. I,